Hello readers, I hope you enjoyed the book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle. Today we're going to be creating artwork that's inspired by his own artwork. So I made a copy of one of the pages and we're going to be kind of making a sun a little bit like Eric Carle did. Now he uses painted papers, we're going to be using a marker instead of paint. So here's the supplies you'll need. Um, I highly recommend a piece of newspaper or something for um, keeping off of your table or surfaces. Um, you're going to need two sheets of white paper. Um, you'll need markers, blues and oranges and yellows. And I tried to find as many orange colors as I could and many blue colors as I could. But you can do just one blue and one yellow and orange if you want to. You'll need a pencil some kind of bowl and I'm using my cat's water bowl but you can use like a cereal bowl or any kind of little bowl. You'll need some scissors, some glue, and um, if you have one, a, a water bottle. So a bottle, bottle you can spray water on your um, picture. Um, if you don't want to bother with markers and water, there is a version of this project where you can just color with crayons. So I use uh, different blues and, and yellows and oranges. So the yellows and oranges was one page and the blues were on the other page. And you can just use crayon and you won't need the water and the markers. And this is what the example would look like with crayon. So it works absolutely. It's a little more fun to do it with the markers, but um, if you wanna just do crayons, you can do that too. All right, so here's how we do this. First, we take one of our sheets of paper and we're going to color it um, I'm going to start with blue. So you don't have to make it perfect. You just want to color little patches with your blue. And that's the beauty of using the water. It's going to turn your marker into almost like paint. And it will fill in any of the white gaps that you may have made with your um, when you colored. So I'm adding in little patches of the dark blue. And then maybe I'll do some of my medium blue. Again, if you only have one kind of blue, it is absolutely fine if you just want to color with one blue. I do feel like I'm going really fast. If you take your time and make it a little more solid and you add a little more ink, I mean, it doesn't have to look pretty, but it does actually come out a little bit darker on your final picture. I'm going a little bit too fast, so it's going to be a little bit faint, but it's almost like a sky blue at that point, right? So again, just adding patches of color. And then I have a little bit of a sky blue, although it's really close to that last blue color I tried. And it's almost running out, so I'm not going to add very much of this. It's going to make it really light. This is my darkest color. I'm adding in, filling in gaps. You do want to try and cover as much of the paper as you can. You don't want to leave white, giant white gaps. And if you go slower, it actually comes out a lot darker. It takes a little bit of time for the ink to come down to the tip of the marker. So if you go too fast, it's going to be like I'm doing it right now, where it's kind of like the markers drying out. It's really not drying out. It's that I'm going too fast because if I go slow it, it's nice and dark. Keep it going. I like to switch my markers back and forth so I give them a little bit of time to catch up with the ink. And we're almost done. When you're uh, finished with this blue one, you'll do the same thing with the um, yellows and oranges as well. Okay, almost done. Just got to fill in this last bit here and down here at the bottom. And one last little corner over here. Okay, so now that I've done the blue, now I'm going to do the same thing to the orange paper. So one paper is blue, one paper is orange. 
And I'm going to do the same thing. The only thing I would suggest on this one, and I actually kind of forgot to do this my first time, is make one corner of it all dark orange. Um, because when we finish this, we'll need his eyes and nose and mouth to be orange. Um, so you definitely want at least one corner of it to be orange. And I have like this tiger orange and I have a regular orange. And then after I do that corner, then I'm just going to go back and fill in random patches just like I did with the blues. I'm finding the sections to add these colors to. And you notice I'm getting it all over this newspaper and that's fine. That's why it's there. It's to keep it off my table. Okay, and I found this really cool color. I don't know exactly what they call it. It's like a um, darker yellow, like a dandelion kind of color. It's almost a regular yellow. So I'm going to color most of my paper with this color. Um, and then I'm almost done. Just got to fill in a little bit more. And I'll use my last yellow. It's just a little bit more classic. And again, if you only have the yellow and the orange, that's absolutely fine too. It doesn't have to be more than two colors or even more than one color. It still will turn out really pretty. Okay. Almost finished. Now, hopefully you spend a little bit more time. If you add a little bit more ink to the page, it's going to turn out even better. Mine's going to be a little bit faint, but that'll be okay. All right, so now I have two colored sheets of paper. Now I'm going to, I'm going to give myself a little more surface area on this newspaper. And I'm going to spray it pretty thoroughly with the water. I want it to be completely soaked through. Um, and that will make the um, ink in the marker spread out because it is water soluble. So that means the water will break it down and turn it into a liquid again. All right, and I don't know if you can see, but it is pretty wet. Um, it's kind of drippy on the bottom, and that is absolutely fine. I'm actually seeing the newspaper shine through it, and that's fine. All right, so after we've sprayed this, now we need to spray the other one. So I'm going to grab another piece of newspaper. Um, and I'm going to set this one to the side to dry. Um, when I did this yesterday to make my example, I um, used a hair dryer to dry it faster um, just to see if it worked, and it totally worked. So if you don't want to have to wait for the very, very liquidy paper to dry, you can um, just dry it with a hair dryer. I right, do the same thing with the blue one. I'm turning them to liquid. Okay, and so that is very saturated. You can see the liquid starting to um, mix together. And um, don't worry if it has these lines in it, eventually that's going to go away. Especially if you color darker, that's really going to go away. And it'll mix together really nicely. All right, so I have some finished papers that I already did yesterday that I'll show you how to do the project from this step. So after you have either hair dried your picture or um, you have hair, uh, let's see, I said hair dried, or waited probably, probably need to wait several hours or put it out in the sun for like 10 minutes, right? Because the sun's ridiculously hot right now. Um, then you should have papers that look like this. And you see how they've kind of mixed together to make it kind of a cool, um, almost tie dyed effect. I love, I love markers that have had water added to them. All right, so now we're going to use our bowl, and you can decide if you want to make it a half a sun, like Eric Carle's picture, or if you want to do the full sun in the middle of the page, you can totally do that too. So on this yellow paper, I'm going to take my bowl, and I'm going to put it upside down. I like to put it as far to the edge as I possibly can so that I don't waste any paper in the middle. And I'm going to use my pencil and draw around my bowl to make a perfect circle. 
kind of see that. And then we use our scissors to cut out our circle. So Eric Carl used thick paints. He would do layers of different cool, awesome colors, bright colors, and then he, just like this, he would trace out the pencil lines and then cut out his, his designs. Um, try to cut your pencils off so we don't see any pencil lines and that'll make it look even more like Eric Carle's pictures. All right, so this is our background. This is where the sun's gonna go. I decided to do the whole sun instead of a half sun this time, but if you wanna do a half sun, you just put it on the edge of the paper and then you can turn it over to the back and uh, draw the line there with a the pencil and cut it off. Um, now we're gonna make his sun rays. So, let's see, I want to leave this, uh, not red, that's orange, I want to leave this orange corner for his eyes, nose, and mouth. So, I'm going to start making, let's see, what do we want to do? I'm going to start making sun rays here. And I'm going to use, um, let's see, it's about a fourth of an inch. So, about as thick as a pencil would be thick. That's how uh, thick I'm going to make my little sun rays. You could do yours thinner or thicker if you want to. It's up to you. And I'm going to make them, let's see, about as long as my hand is. And you won't need all of them this long, but we'll cut some short and cut some long. And you see this is going to be plenty long enough. All right, so now I just cut whole bunch and if some of them are thicker than others that's okay um, we like a little bit of variety in our pictures um, if we look at Eric Carl's picture we can see he's got some um, short and some tall some don't even touch the sunshine at all and that's absolutely fine too all right, I'm gonna just cut this straight off and then this makes it a little bit easier to cut these little sun rays. And right now I'm doing them all the same length. And when I go to glue these down, I'm going to trim some of them shorter and some of them, um, some will be short, some will be medium, and some will stay long. So that we have a little bit of variety like Eric Carl's. And you'll need about, let's see, how many do I have here? I'm not even sure. I would just cut uh, about six or seven to start with, and then if you need more, you can always cut more after. Okay, uh, I'm going to leave that. All right, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight little sun rays. And now I'm going to plan it out before I start gluing it down. So um, maybe one here. And then maybe I'll make one little, and then maybe one medium size, and then I'll go with a long one, and then maybe another long one. And I'm putting them about one sun rays distance between each ray, so I could fit another one in between each, but I'm not going to. There. All right, and I'm just going to keep doing this, making some small, maybe I'll put a long one here, uh, maybe a medium one here, and then I might just keep all of these long because they're going to go off the page. And I can reuse that little snippet. I'm definitely going to need some more. So um, what you're going to do is you're going to, um, I like to do, is I put the glue on the little strip. Oh, actually, nope. We gotta glue the sun down first. Um, I'm gonna put a skinny line of glue. Uh-oh, my glue is not working. Come on, glue. Nope. Backup glue. There we go. I'm gonna put a skinny line of glue around, leaving a little bit of the edge around it so that um, it doesn't squeeze out and make a big mess. And then I'm going to put my sun not quite in the middle. I'm going to go a little bit to the side. Alright, and you can use a glue stick for this too. Um, I have a glue stick here. Um, for my rays, I'm going to put um, let's see, a little bit of glue and then 
I like to tuck it underneath. And then what I can do is I can turn my paper over and just snip off the extras. And so you're going to just keep doing this until your whole sun is filled up with rays. And I'll turn it over. And you can wait to the end to turn it over and cut them all off if you want to. You don't have to do that as you go if you don't want to. Okay, maybe I'll do a little one now. It's a little teeny tiny one. He's a baby. Okay, so let's use our imagination and pretend I have put sun rays all the way around my sun. And if you do a half sun, you'll have less sun rays that you need to make. Um, if you do the full sun, you'll have to go all the way around. Um, but once you've done all of the sun rays, then for the face, I drew my face first. If you look at Eric Carls, he used um, like uh, rectangles for the eyes and then just kind of almost an upside down triangle for the nose and then a smile for the mouth. I did a little different eyes because I couldn't make my eyes look good like he did. So I made mine more like a almond shape almost. Alright, so here's how I did my eyes. I did, um, you could even just do ovals. Try and make them even. If you want to, what you can do is you can fold it over and cut one out. Um, but if it's folded over, it'll cut two at the same time, and that way they'll be identical, although they really don't have to be identical. And then um, your nose is kind of like flat on top and then a little bit of a bumpy bottom. You see that? A little bit like that. And then your mouth will be just a smile. Whoa! Got a little bit of a bump there. And then I forgot eyebrows. Eyebrows um, will be like a half smile and a half smile. And again, with you could fold that in half and do one eyebrow and it would be the same on both sides. So then you'll just cut these little guys out, which is a little bit tricky. If it doesn't look perfect, you can always use, you'll have plenty of paper left over that you can redo if you don't like the first ones. Um, try not to let the pencil show. If you have pencil, like mine's showing, I can see pencil still. Um, you can, let's see, my light's not working all of a sudden. Um, you can just flip it over to the other side and then boom, there's no pencil showing. All right, so there's one eye. And then there's two eyes. So my eyes are definitely not even, and that's okay. They don't look exactly the same. I kind of like it that way personally. Gives them a little bit more character. And then, let's see, I'm going to cut the smile out next because it's a little bit easier. And we're working with a smaller sheet of paper. All right. There's a smile. I'm going to turn it so the pencil doesn't show. And honestly, you could just leave it like that and have a smile and eyes. You don't even really have to do the nose and eyebrows. I just like how it gives it a little bit of an extra personality. All right, here's my nose. And the eyebrows, because Eric Carl did eyebrows, so therefore we should do eyebrows too, right? Um, they're just like a smile cut in half. So really, you could do a two smiles and then just cut one of your smiles in half, and that could be your eyebrows. And then cut them apart. All right. Here's my eyebrows. All right. Hopefully, y'all can see that pretty well. It's, ah, it blends in a little bit because we added that orange in there on the um, on the circle of the paper too. All right, so that's how we make our picture. You're gonna glue everything down. You're gonna put these sun rays all the way around, trying to make a variety of sizes. Some are gonna be shorter, some are gonna be medium, and some are gonna be longer. Um, just trying to add a little bit of variety to your length as you glue them down, and then you can glue your face down. And that's how you make a sun collage.
inspired by Eric Carle. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.